Hi, I'm Simon K. Jones, and you're listening to the latest chapter of Tales from the Triverse. You can find more at simonkjones.substack.com. This is Loyalties, Part 3. Previously, DCI James Miller has been arrested on charges of corruption. He is about to be interrogated by DI Robert Ford and DI Lois Morgan. Early shift. On duty, DI Robert Ford and DI Lois Morgan, London. 1974, December. There weren't many cells left at Scotland Yard, with it having become an administrative centre for the entire Met, rather than a traditional police station. There were smaller local stations to handle the arrested masses. The Yard cells were maintained for suspects involved in more sensitive cases, where lumping them in with the rank-and-file criminal would be bad for all concerned. Through its doors, the Yard had welcomed disgraced politicians, drunk celebrities and awkwardly wealthy business people. It kept things simpler. The last thing anyone wanted was a former MP getting shanked by someone who had just been brought in for assault. Ford and Morgan strode down the corridors towards the cells, which were at the very bottom of the building, low enough to enjoy seepage from the Thames during heavy rainfall. Months had gone by without Ford being in the office at the same time as Morgan. They both had the most distance from the shit show that had gone down in the SDC, at least until they were pulled off the case and replaced with a formal internal affairs investigation, and needed to get some answers out of Miller. They also had Holland and Shaw in custody, though Holland was there more for show. No need to reveal him as the source of the information by not arresting him. From what Holland had already said, Shaw was a pawn rather than a ringleader. Poor girl. Still, she was old enough to have known better. Haven't been down here for years, Morgan said her voice reverberating off the old limestone walls. The plan is to pump Miller for information, Ford said. We've got Lord Hutchinson's name already, let's see what else we can get him to give up. My gut tells me he'll roll over quickly, but we'll see. Might depend how high up this thing he was, Morgan said, showing her ID to the guard at the entrance to the cell block. Do you have a firm handle on what this thing is? It all felt very piecemeal in my interview with Backer and Clark. Ford nodded. Far too circumstantial for my liking. Though Holland's recordings do tip the balance. Clark's claiming to have other incriminating evidence but wouldn't hand over the hard copy. They proceeded past the cells, towards the interview room at the far end, where Miller would be waiting. Ford wrinkled his nose at the stench. Even if the yard cells were kept for dubiously privileged prisoners, they didn't get any special treatment. Which was good. Ford wouldn't have liked those rich, fancy southerners getting an easy ride, it was hard enough getting them behind bars in the first place. What do you think to Backer's claims that a new AI megaship has been built behind closed doors? Sounds like science fiction bullshit to me, Ford said. But I know Backer hates all that stuff. He's not a man prone to flights of fancy, put it that way. I'm inclined to think they're onto something if Backer thinks it worth pursuing. I suggest we don't lead with that, Morgan said. See how much rope Miller already has around his neck. We might not need to push too hard. Agreed. Ready? She nodded. Ford turned the handle, and they entered an adjacent corridor. A side door led to the observation space, but they headed for the main door to the interview room. Miller was already sat at a table, looking like a child that was about to be told off by a parent. While Morgan closed the door, Ford pulled aside a chair and sat opposite from Miller. He looked up with an expression that cycled between hope and anger. The man was furious, but was also wondering if Ford would offer some form of rescue. What happens next is up to you, Ford said. That means this is the last meaningful decision you get to make for yourself before you get sent somewhere far nastier than the yard. At that point, you don't get to make decisions. They're made for you, and you won't like them. He leaned back. So there you go. Your turn. You know how this works. You have to get me out of here, Miller said. Do you know who they put down here in these cells? Well, sure. Ford said, the bad guys. For a second he looked like he was going to object. What can you give me? Morgan chuckled. You're forgetting which side of the table you're on, James. Fine. You've gone as far as arresting me, which tells me two things. One, you think you've got something. Two, you don't have enough. Otherwise you wouldn't have gone for me first. Ford held up his arms in mock disbelief. What do you think we've been doing? What makes you think you're the only person under arrest? Because there's just no way, Miller said. Look, maybe I can pass along information that would be of interest. Things I've heard. 
There's no use in pussyfooting around, Ford said, crossing his arms. I know you're trying not to incriminate yourself, but you're just wasting everyone's time. Get to the point. It was odd that the man didn't have a lawyer. That detail made no sense. Either they hadn't arrived yet, or his expected legal support had fallen through. I need some assurances. Immunity from prosecution. Can't promise you that. OK, OK. Protection, then. You've really stirred up the hive with this, Ford. Me? I didn't do anything. I just followed the evidence and it led straight to your door. Backer, then. He's been up to something for months, snooping around. There'll be a full investigation, Morgan said, moving to the back wall, where she leaned against the darkened glass. Independent of the department. It'll all come out, but we're not there yet. Right now, it's us, and it's you. There was a debate happening inside Miller's head. Ford could tell. He'd seen it hundreds of times, played out in the twitches of a mouth and the crease of an eyelid. The man was weighing a choice of variously shitty options. Can you protect me? Ford shrugged. From what? Grinning despairingly, Miller shook his head. You don't have time for this cat and mouse bullshit, yes or no. I can't promise protection if I don't know what I'm protecting you from, Miller. The ton of bricks you just brought down on me, you and the whole department. The bare bulb flickered overhead. Ford glanced up at Morgan, who nodded. You know the drill, Morgan said. Give us something we can work with, which leads directly to arrests and convictions, and it will be good news for you. At worst, a more lenient sentence. At best, witness protection, and maybe you don't end up in prison. Seconds trudged past. Ford didn't move, holding his gaze on Miller, watching for any tell, and not giving him the opportunity to wriggle away. A minute passed in silence as the soon-to-be ex-DCI squirmed on his metal chair. Ford had never rated the man, had always wondered how someone as superficial as Miller had managed to get up to Detective Chief Inspector. Rankings really made it much sense in his experience, not in the Met, at least. Ford had played and replayed Holland's recording. At the very least, Miller was going down for blackmail, even if nothing else came from it. But there was more, much more, lurking beneath the surface if they could just tease it out. Listen to me, Miller said at last, breaking the quiet. This goes all the way to the top, right to the top, not just Mid-Earth, but the Joint Council. Max Earth, Palinor, it's big, the kind of big you can't say no to. Get specific, Morgan said. Lord Hutchinson. The words were spat, like he was clearing his throat. Lord Hutchinson is a key player. He coordinates the Mid-Earth contingent. He pulls all the strings. You should look into his investments. He owns half the papers in England and across the Empire, but nobody knows it. He controls the conversations. Ford shifted his weight on the chair. Which conversations? All of them. You think Nigel Maxwell would be prime fucking minister without something greasing the door to number ten? Little disaster here. A raging cough there. Then they want to get to new... Then they want to get some new laws through, so there's a conveniently escalated riot. That feeling we've all had, like everything's been going to shit over the last two years, that's not a coincidence. It's not just how things are. It's on purpose. The man was going straight in and throwing Hutchinson under the tram. Interesting. Ford had anticipated having to pull it out of Miller more forcibly. And going for full-on electoral interference, disinformation campaigns, and perhaps even fabricated or manipulated tragedies... It was more than he'd expected. We know about Hutchinson, he said, being sure to appear unimpressed. That's on the tapes. Tell us something we don't know. Hutchinson's just one part of it. He's not doing this alone. We need names. Okay, you need to look at Chancellor Everard Baltine at Fountain University. He's the Lord of Brulia. We know who he is. He's Hutchinson's Palinese equivalent. This is across the whole Triverse. From Max Earth, there's Ambassador Charles Matheson, an American. He splits his time between the Tower here and Max Earth. Those are the names I know. And what is it these three are up to, according to you? Sweat dripped from Miller's face. They've been building a superintelligence, a new AI. Shit, perhaps Backer's team was right. A new AI, like the mega ships on Max Earth. Those annoying robots that show up sometimes and muscle in on our cases. That's right, but different. An AI they could control, separate from the network. 
Morgan stood straighter and stepped towards the wall to Miller's right. Developing new AI is strictly prohibited on Max Earth and by the Joint Council. Miller nodded. Right, and who wrote that law? The AIs. It's a Max Earth diktat handed down to the rest of us. What Hutchinson and the others are doing is about disrupting that control, regaining human sovereignty. Hmm, now there's some motivation at last. And how do you go about building an AI without anyone noticing? They made it in pieces on Palinor. Nobody there knew what the individual parts were for, so it was all done with plausible deniability. Then it was all shipped to Max Earth for final assembly. It's taken years, which is why the megaships didn't notice it happening right under their noses. Ford wanted to question the logic of trying to counter AI with even more AI, but that was a debate for another time. What's the end game here? To cause trouble? Money? Power and influence? Nothing so prosaic, Miller said. The intention is to remodel society across the Triverse, to return to how things used to be when humans had proper agency, to free us from our keepers. He was starting to sound like he was reciting the official literature. Even now, as he gave it all up, after they'd left him to hang, a part of him still believed. Come on, Ford, I know you. You've always hated working in London, following all the rules and regulations, having to do what you're told by these namby-pamby bureaucrats. But it's worse than that. The strings are being pulled by the superintelligences on Max Earth, and we don't even realise that we're the puppets. Thanks for listening. Uh, do leave a comment and find lots more besides behind the scenes notes and that kind of thing over on the newsletter at simonkjones.substack.com.